Hello and welcome to the Vegan Body Revolution Show. This is your host, Thomas Tadlock from veganbodyrevolution.com, where I show you how to achieve your ultimate dream body on a 100% plant based diet. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. We have been talking for the past two episodes with one of the largest, if not the largest, vegan bodybuilder who's competing right now, Mr. Ryan Nelson, who stands at six foot four inches, weighs on average about 250 pounds at, get this, five to six percent body fat during the off season and In the previous episode, he went over his diet on how he's going to eat in order to get even bigger and even more muscular. I can't wait to see how that pans out. And I think that you need to definitely check out the previous episode if your goal is to gain more muscle so you can find out how it's done by one of the biggest dudes in the game. In this episode, Ryan is going to go over exactly what he does with his workouts step-by-step, rep-by-rep, exercise-by-exercise, day-by-day to be able to create this insanely muscular physique and to keep it growing. So let's not waste any time. Let's bring him back. Everybody, please welcome back to the Vegan Body Revolution show, Mr. Ryan Nelson. Tom, how are you doing, man? I am just blown away at the amount of food that you eat every single day. It's, uh, it is so impressive. And it's, I'm looking at it, Look, it's definitely well worth it to have a physique like yours, brother. That's incredible. So now I want to find out how to put this together with your workout routine to be able to get some serious results in gaining muscle on a vegan diet. So let's go over your workout. Okay. Um, where should I start at? Let's start out with Monday. Okay, let's start out with Monday. Monday morning, I will usually get my cardio and ab workout in, which I usually spend about 40 minutes to an hour. I'll uh, dedicate anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes of cardio to start it out with. And that will usually consist of a incline treadmill interval intervals where I will go from a power walk all the way up to a sprint, one minute on, one minute off. I usually stick to uh, something close to that. And after, what, a, what do you have your my, settings set to? Like, so how much of an incline do you have it at? I, I keep it uh, usually between the 8% and 15% range. And I'm all about the incline simply to build calf muscle. Mm, I could use that. Dude, I've got no calves. That, that's where my one area that I really try to focus on is those calves. So I use the incline treadmill to help me build those calves up. Um, now, do you and then keep there, it? I'll I go. mean, so like when you set your incline, like whether it's 8 or 15, do you keep it there? Or are you are you making it go up to 15 and then down to 8? I'll keep it. I'll keep it at one consistent incline for my whole cardio okay workout. so you choose an incline between 8 and 15 and you're and that's you're doing that for tw- 15 to 25 minutes yep okay got it so then so uh so how, how fast are you going during your power walk so my power walk will be about three to three and a half miles an hour and i'll do that for a minute and then usually the next minute i'll go up to four four and a half miles an hour and come back down to three three and a half, whatever it is I choose for that day. And then the next minute I'll go up to five and then I'll come back down and then I'll increase all the way up to usually about nine miles an hour. Jeez. Okay. So, so it's just progressively last, getting harder you know, and harder. One of those last intervals will, I'll be pushing pretty hard for that last minute. And I'll usually take five to 10 minutes of just a steady power walk to get warmed up to okay. get those intervals. So five to ten minute warm up, and uh, then you hit those intervals. I mean, dude, nine miles per hour on an eight to fifteen percent incline—that's that's insane. You must be pretty darn yeah. gassed after you finish that. It's cooking, and I usually got a good, a real good sweat rolling when I when I get off that nine nine mile an hour incline. 
Wow. And do you go, do I'm, you, I'm gasping for air. I mean, do you go all the way through the 15 to 25 minute mark or do you do like a, a cool down too? Yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll be, I'll be 15 to 20 minutes and then I'll step off and go pretty much directly into the abs. So you're totally warmed up and you're ready to rock abs. Okay, cool. Let's talk about your abs. Yeah, so uh, usually we'll spend 20 to 30 minutes on abs, and I will do a big hanging leg raise guy, really like hanging leg raises. Um, also, we'll include some, we have a crunch machine at my gym that, you know, as much as crunches aren't my favorite thing, they seem to be pretty effective for me, so I'll either choose reps or I'll choose weight. You can stack some weight on there. So sometimes I will do reps of 10, or sometimes I will choose to just bust out 100 reps of crunches on the crunch machine. Um, we'll incorporate in some plank movements. Let me let me get this. Where, so you, when you say like rep, you mean you'll do sets of 10 and do multiple sets, or just bang out yeah, 100 do- straight reps nonstop? <laughs> multiple sets of 10 weighted usually 10 sets of 10 is what I'll do if I'm doing them weighted and then or or do like a hundred straight I'll just do I'll, I'll just do I'll just try to rep right through a hundred of them holy crap with as much weight as you can just, got it okay yeah, and, then and then the then leg raises like, what are your reps um, and sets for your le- your hanging leg raises yeah and then the hanging leg raises I'll usually do five sets of 10 on the hanging leg raises. Um, and then I'll come in and do what I call a benched oblique movement where I have my legs hooked on the bench. Um, and I'm kind of lying on my side. I would call it have half my torso hanging off the bench and I'm coming up and I'm crunching those obliques and I'll do three to five sets on each side, uh, reps of 10 to 15 reps with a good squeeze in those obliques at the top. Mm. And are you using any any extra weight with this? On those, I don't I don't ever need to use any weight. I sometimes will use an incline to make them a little tougher. Mhm. Incline decline. Got it. And then when <laughs> when you're doing the leg raises, I I saw a picture of you doing it. You go straight leg on your leg raises. Right? I do. Yeah. I do. That's pretty, pretty freaking hardcore. Okay. Straight legged. Got it. So you got the straight, you do five sets of straight legged leg raises, and then you got, you're, do, you're doing, you're doing a hundred reps uh, total um, of crunch machines. So that could be 10 sets of 10 or a hundred straight reps. And yep. And then, uh, and then you're benched oblique. Uh, you're doing three to five sets on each side of ten to fifteen reps. I mean, that's a lot of volume already. Yeah, yep. So that'll usually kind of cover the abs for the day. You um, you spend twenty to thirty minutes on. How much rest are you getting in between sets? I'll I'll take uh I'll take thirty to sixty seconds. Approximately somewhere in there. It could be a little longer. Holy cow, man. So you do a set of leg raises, and then 30, 60 seconds later, you do another set, and it's 30. I mean, you're like you're ready to go again that soon. Ready to go. Wow. Just got to keep those abs burning pretty good the whole time. You got you. You have a really strong, impressive cardiovascular system. Yeah, that's You got some serious endurance in those muscles. That's impressive, really impressive. So that takes care of your morning cardio and abs routine. So then you come back after a couple meals uh, later in the day, and then you do your main workout, right? Yeah, so I'll get a, a couple good meals, like you said, and get carved back up, full energy, and then I'll hit my main workout. And I don't ever do a this is Monday, this is Tuesday, this is Wednesday. I'm totally uh, how my body feels and what I've hit most recently. So I'm more of a, I do an upper body and lower body and upper body and lower body or a posing movement. So if I do like chest and shoulders one day, 
the next day I would be okay with doing a back workout. Or so, if I do an upper body, I would be okay with doing a lower body the next day. But I would never do like two pulls in one in two days. I wouldn't come and do a deadlift and then a back movement the next day. All right. So you so the so step one of your process is you scan your body and you say first of all you you said two things you said you do based on how you feel and number two what was the most recent I think what you really meant was what was the what's the the thing that needs to be worked out the most because it's been the longest since I've worked it out correct so step one is I guess you're saying what's not sore on me <laughs> number one uh, and then number two is okay when was the last time i worked my legs for, or when was the last time i worked this and whatever is whatever was the last not the last not the le- not the most recent but when was the longest that i let work somebody that takes priority right yep yep okay so basically whenever a muscle part is ready that's when it, that's when you work it out when when that is the the next the next muscle up that has not been worked out um, the most recently, I think, is how we. we yeah, I see it. what you're saying. So, so is, some days. Is the muscle be focusing on that day. So some days you might only be working like <laughs> one or two body parts, and then other days it just might be your luck that it's time for like four or five. It'll always be very singled out. It'll okay. always. And so, so my categories will either be leg day with quad emphasis leg day with hamstring emphasis, back day or shoulder and chest day, or just a plain shoulder day. Got, okay, got it. And then, um, and then any like arms, biceps, triceps? I usually will throw um, triceps in with the chest and shoulders and biceps in with the back. But I don't single them out hardly ever. Occasionally I will do a strictly arm day, but very rarely. Okay, got it. So so these so you've got five main categories and you basically look at when was the longest or how what which one which one of these have the greatest time since I've worked them out and then that is how you choose your priority. You got it. Okay, cool. Well then based on that, let's uh let's go through what your typical leg slash quad workout looks like. So usually I'll start with some squats, some barbell squats, um, and I'll probably <laughs> work somewhere around that 10 rep range, anywhere from three to six heavy sets. So in working up to heavy working sets, I may do anywhere from uh, three to five sets to get up to those heavy sets. Mm-hmm. So I'll put on, I'll do a set with the bar. And then I'll put on 135 and do 10 reps. And then I'll put on 225 and do 10 reps. So you're fixing the reps at 10. Yeah, somewhere around that 10 rep range. I work a lot in the 8 to 12 rep range on Mm. the squats. Got it. Okay. Then I'll get up in that. Then I'll get up in that 225. And then probably I'll call that that 245 to 275 set of 10 my first working set and then I'll do a set at say 275, 295, 315 and then that last set 335 by 10. Wow. Okay, so you're so you've already got three three or so warm-up sets before you even begin the 3 to 6 working sets. Yep. So that's a ton of squats. How much rest are you getting in between your squats? I'll take anywhere from a minute and a half to two and a half minutes, probably. And then some of those last working sets, probably three, three, three and a half minutes. 
I was going to – okay, that makes me feel a little better. I mean, you went and said you took like 30, 60 seconds of rest with your abs. I'm like, oh, my God, please don't tell me it takes only 30 seconds of rest with a squat. I just did squats today. And, I, I mean, after each set, I was I was doing everything I could to procrastinate doing my next set. It It kicked <laughs> my butt every time, every time. I get like lightheaded. It, my I feel like I've got a like. It's weird, man. Like my ears pop. Like the inside of my ears feel like they're they're kind of inflated, and I'm talking in a fishbowl. That's when you know you're working hard. Right? Oh God, yeah. Now and I just and like I, it, it took everything I could to just to stand. I just wanted to sit so badly. <laughs> But you know, I got my I got my hot wife there, and all the people in the gym. I can't, I got to look good for them, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> can't puss out. Can't. All right, so you do your squats. So I mean, dude, your legs must be toast already by that point. I, I know mine would be. I'm feeling, it, feeling it pretty good by then. So then, then I'll move on to uh, to leg press, and usually do some leg press behind that. And I'll keep the leg press a little higher reps. So I'll, I'll go anywhere from 15 to 20 reps on the leg press. Mm-hmm. And I'll work three to five working sets of leg press. Doing the similar type of uh, warm-up leading up to the working sets? Yep. I'll throw on one plate, two plate, three plate, four plate, and then I'll be working sometime around five plates. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. So three to five of those. And then what's after that? And then usually some kind of hamstring movement I'll put in there. I'll always touch on it. Well, this is quad. This is like this is your quad emphasis day. It is quad emphasis day, but I'll still make sure I touch on those hamstrings. Okay, got it. So I'll probably either do a dumbbell stiff leg partial hamstring movement, or I'll go over to a hamstring curl, or I'll do some kind of hip bridge to involve those hamstrings in. And then what kind of reps and sets are you going for there? Um, depending on which one I'm doing, probably around that 12 to 15 reps. And sets? Three to five. Three to five. Okay. And then I'll move on to some leg extensions. A lot of times, super setted, um, either with lunges or wall sets. Oh, geez. So those those are always a, a combination that really just finish the legs off for me. So I'll I'll do um, leg extensions and go right over into a minute wall set with one with a with a 45 pound plate on my lap and go through that three times or i'll do some lunges um about 10 reps of each extensions and lunges and and either of those two my legs are are good for the day yeah i bet how many sets are you doing of those three sets and done (laughs) And done. Done. Wheel me to my car. <laughs> Call Crawl my wife so car. she can carry me home. That's awesome. Okay, great. So that's your leg quad day, right? Yep, that is the quad day. So then I'll then I'll get some food in, go home, and get ready to do some abs. The next cardio and abs the next morning. Cool. So cardio and abs. That's is that every day that you work out? That's every day. So that's five days a week? That's five days a week, maybe six, maybe seven days a week. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's so that's like a, a fundamental uh, routine for you. Yeah, it's, if I'm there, I'm at the gym, I should do something, Ryan. <laughs> and then, so let's, let's, since we just talked about your legs and quads day, um, how does that differ from your legs and hams day? So my hamstring day, I will, my first movement is going to be a deadlift. And is this a traditional deadlift? Traditional deadlift. And what does your sets and reps look like for that? I'll keep the deadlifts pretty low reps. So I'll work the 
the four, the one to four rep range in the deadlifts. How fun! Love deadlifts. My and, favorite. Yeah, and uh, and how many how many uh, sets are you doing? I'll do quite a few sets of deadlifts. Um, again, I will take several sets in my progression, working up to it as a warm up, and then when I get up around that. 405 area i'll start doing working sets and around how many are you doing uh then i'll be doing probably three to five working sets um, are you doing... sometimes more than that when you're doing your deadlifts uh do you do them like some guys do you pick it up and then drop it or are you lowering it down touching and then picking it back up again uh no that's that's my that's my big pet peeve is on deadlifts lowering it down and control because i feel like as important as the pull on the way up is the control on the way down mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's why i think a lot of people see like the the form really go and the injuries start to come in is where when they don't control that downward motion I I got I have a question for you. Maybe you can figure this out. When when I recently did start getting to to my personal records on the deadlifts, I had a pull and an injury in my posterior deltoid of my left arm. Has that ever happened to you? You know, I've never had anything in the upper body tweak. I have heard some some guys that used, uh, I would call it farmer's grip, and I think others have called it farmer's grip before, where you reverse the hands on one side. And I have heard a lot of bicep injuries because of that. And that oh, you mean the over and up. under grip? Over and under, farmer's grip, yeah. And so you don't use I, a farmer's grip? I used to be a big farmer's grip guy, but when I got into the bodybuilding, I'm I'm so about symmetry that I've went to just a, I've went to straps and went to a double overhand. Mm. I think you, I think, um, I think that's actually important. Yeah, because I think, you know, I think is when I see my biggest improvement in deadlift is when I bit the bullet and stopped being the tough guy that didn't use straps, went to straps and said, hey. I know these these forearms of mine are pretty strong, but how do I expect my forearms to keep up with my hamstrings? I agree, and there's an there there's a there's quite a bit of a, a of a twist in the spine whenever you use an over and underhand grip. I mean, there's you, I watch, you can't yeah, you can't get I around watch it. The over underhand grip, and I. See see the form really start to go in people and that's what I will I will I will point that out right away and it makes the biggest difference for people. Yeah, I agree. I I, I know a lot of hardcore power lifters they'll like, no, you gotta use the over and underhand grip. I I think a lot of folks can potentially run into a lot of trouble that way. Agreed. Well, good stuff. Deadlifts is definitely one of my favorite exercises. It's just, it's badass. It is, it is so, it's, it's just so gangster. And, and do you do, do you do, do you do them barefoot or uh, like I see a lot of guys that are now doing them barefoot. I like to do them with uh, vibrant. You know on. what? Uh, I, I have this awesome pair of weightlifting shoes my mom bought me for Christmas that I religiously use on leg day, whether it be squats or deadlifts. So. I put on the Nike Romuluses and rock those out. <laughs> nice, nice, very cool. They they look like the old school wrestling shoes, right? Yeah, they do. Flat the high, bottom, like the high school board. wrestling shoes. Yeah, they, that's awesome, awesome. Yeah, keeping awesome. it real, real retro. <laughs> All right, after deadlifts, what do you do? So then I'll probably come behind that with a hamstring curl or maybe even another leg press. I like that leg press on, uh, right behind it, but I'll change my foot position to a higher point on the on the platform, so it's more emphasis on the glutes and hams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what's your sets and reps and, look like for that? 
And again, I'll keep it pretty close uh, to the sets and the reps I do on the quad day. Um, anywhere from that 15 to 20. Um, but I will use that leg press machine sometimes and do some higher reps than that too. So you're doing three to five sets of 15 to 20? Yeah. Yeah. One, one I really like to throw in once a month, um, is a, is a 40, 30, 20, 10 reps. So you do 40, you strip it down, drop set. This is a drop set. You do 40 reps. And then you drop a plate off, and then you do 30 right behind it. You drop a plate off, and you do 20 right behind that, and you drop a plate off, and you do 10 right behind that. Nice. I'll throw I'll throw a little variation in there. I have some higher reps every once in a while, but for the most part, 15 to 20 reps on the leg press. And and is it an either or ham curls or leg press, or are you doing them both? I'll do them both, but just depending on the day is which I'll bring in, which one I'll bring in first. Okay. So for your ham curls, how many reps and sets are you doing? I'll probably be around the 10 to 12 rep range on the hamstring curls. And sets? Three to five. Three to five. All right. Great. After the ham curls? Uh, so then I'll give a little touch of quads. Okay, and I'll do points. some. Uh, I'll probably do some front squats or some leg extensions or some lunges. All right, and reps and sets for those. Again, I stay in that three to five sets of ten to twelve reps. Awesome. And then after that, after that, I'll be. I'll probably be pretty close to finished. I will maybe do. A little abductor adductor work, uh, but after that, I'm I'm usually pretty good. Okay, so you jump on those, the those deadlifts. Those dead. I usually spend a lot on those deadlifts. I'm pretty toasted after the deadlifts, um, and then doing doing the leg press um, and coming behind that probably with some hamstring curls, extensions, lunges. I'm usually pretty. Pretty done, but we'll sometimes do a little adductor adductor work. Um, that's about it. Doing three to five sets of abductor and ad adductors too. Yeah, probably three sets. Three sets of twenty. Twenty, and then okay, and then that's it. And do you get them both? Absolutely, I hit them both. They're right next to each other in the machine, so. So you just bang them out as. And then, and then yeah, it's I over. Call them, I call them sister machines. I like to hit them both when I'm doing them. Yeah, cool. So then that completes a, <laughs> that completes both your leg workouts. Yep. Right on. Interesting, man. So far, so good. So we got the legs and quads, legs and hams. Let's do uh, back and biceps next. Back and biceps. Okay. Um, so one of my favorite back movements is. A bent over V bar row. I don't know if you've ever set it up before or not, but I I go over and I steal the handle from one of the pull down machines. Love that. And it's yeah. Just a, a small V grip. Yep. And then I'll just I've found that there's a little chain at the gym I have that I can connect the chain and the V grip and just a barbell together. Oh, a barbell. Wow. Okay. Yeah, a barbell. So I've got the barbell. Oh no. Okay. Now I'm th- okay. Yeah, barbell. I've got the barbell butted up against one of the corners. A corner. Of the, yep. Of, of a wall, and then I'll I'll have the it in between my legs, and I'll be rowing the bar up towards me with some plates on the end of the bar. Uh, maybe you've seen it done. It kind of almost mimics a T bar. Yeah. I okay. So let me understand. Where does the chain come into play? The chain comes into play just to give you a little bit of distance between the barbell and the V-grip. Got it. So, because when I've done it, I, I literally, I just hook the V-grip underneath just the bar. Just straight hook the V-grip right onto the barbell, but I've, I, I feel like I get a little bit better movement if I actually distance the V-grip and the barbell, from it, space it out just a little bit. How uh, how much uh, 
so how much chain length do you have between the connection? About, about six to eight inches, I think. And that puts 